Well, there's even more news that we didn't get a chance to uh, get to on this last Orbit 10.36, and this is really exciting. Jared, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, gravitational waves? Yes. I now, know you're excited about this. Yeah, so for the past couple years, astronomy based on gravitational waves has been primarily done by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, which we will call LIGO because that's yeah, a mouthful. Yeah, we will. Um, but recently, Virgo, which is a gravitational wave uh, observatory, which is run by the European Gravitational Observatory, EGO. As it uh, is. They turned it on to get operational data and begin gathering that, and we now have our first jointly detected gravitational wave. Um, so we have a gravitational wave that was detected by both LIGO and Virgo. Now this may not seem like a big deal because after all this is the fourth gravitational wave uh, that we've detected, but this is the first time that we've had three systems that detect gravitational waves to do so, and this is a critically important step in using gravitational waves to explore our universe. And we just want to send out a huge congratulations to the LIGO team, who it's just been announced a few days ago that they won the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics for their research into gravitational waves and their eventual detection of gravitational waves. Now, the three detectors, two from LIGO and one from Virgo, allow us to pinpoint where exactly the gravitational wave being detected is coming from in the sky. Now, with just two detectors at LIGO, uh, we could get a large swath of where that gravitational wave uh, may have actually occurred at. And you can see on this chart right here of the sky itself, uh, we've got three uh, of the candidates, that uh, three of the gravitational waves that came before, you can see there's a very large patch of sky with orange, blue, red, and green. Um, but now with Virgo added on, we're 20 times more accurate than just LIGO alone, which the gravitational wave that was detected by all three is down there in the bottom left. And you can see it is in a very small spot of the sky where we think it's at. So another cool thing that three observation systems allows us to do is actually characterize the polarization of gravitational waves. And to basically break down what is polarization, well, basically, that's the way the gravitational wave oscillates. And this was the exact type of oscillation that was predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Now, knowing the polarization of the gravitational wave also tells us the orientation of the two black holes as they're spinning around each other. So we can actually figure out the angles and uh, the, the velocities as they're coming together, which is ridiculous. We haven't been able to do that before with the previous gravitational wave detections. Uh, now, gravitational wave 170814 was caused by the merger of two binary black holes, 131 times the mass of our sun, the other 25 times the mass of our sun. They were only about 1.8 billion light years away from us, and it moved the detectors about 1 10 thousandth the width of a proton. So, What's so cool about this? This is another proof that Einstein's theory of general relativity is correct. And it's yet to be proven wrong by any experiment conducted. Um, and just a little note, earlier this month we talked about the rumor of LIGO and Virgo detecting two neutron stars colliding. Well, we have no update to that story other than that it's been confirmed by everyone but LIGO and Virgo themselves that that has been detected. <laughs> it's basically an open secret, an open rumor, if you will, at this point right now. So this story does not disprove that. That. It's just we found another one a couple days after the detection of those neutron stars colliding. So very cool stuff wow. that we've been able to do with the gravitational wave observatories. So. Yeah, very, very cool. Thank you, Jared. Mm -hmm. On Orbit awesome. 10.36, our main topic was actually Elon Musk's keynote speech at International Astronautical Congress. If you're interested in this and many other topics that we talk about on space or on tomorrow, feel free to join <laughs> us every Saturday live at 1800 UTC.